In this tutorial, we're going to explore some of the instant digital blending techniques in Raya Pro. But to begin with, if you have your images in Photoshop like this and you wish to layer them, all you need to do is make sure that the last panel is selected and then choose the number of exposures you wish to layer. So I have five exposures, so I'm going to press number five. And now we'll see all of our exposures are layered nicely in Photoshop. If you shot your exposures handheld and you want to align them in Photoshop, all you need to do is unlock the background layer and choose Auto Align. Now before we go into digital blending, let's talk about the exposures that we're working with. Regardless of the scene, it's always best that we choose one exposure which we consider to be our base exposure. And in this image, the bottom exposure here is my base exposure. But how you choose to layer your exposures is entirely up to you. Experiment with your images and eventually you'll find your own style. Now the first digital blending process we're going to work with is Rapid Blend If. And I have three exposures here. This darker exposure I'm going to use to restore the highlights which are overexposed in the base exposure. All I need to do is, because this is a darker exposure, I just need to choose Rapid Blend If Dark. And instantly we'll see that our darker exposure has blended in nicely with our medium exposure or our base exposure. Remember that we can change the opacity at any time if we want to strengthen or soften the effect. Now for the brighter exposure I just make this visible and choose bright. And you can see that's a very strong effect and all we need to do is bring the opacity down until we're happy, let's say at around 50%. And that's the before and after. We have an overexposed sky and some underexposed areas here. And that's after digital blending. And now, of course, you go into your full workflow, playing with the contrast and making your image look beautiful. Now, with Rapid Blend, if we're changing the layer style of our layers, and to undo it, all we need to do is press Undo, or we can right-click on that layer and choose Clear Layer Style. And we can do that again. And that's how easy it is to work with Rapid Blend, if. Now, the next digital blending process is called Apply Image. And it works differently to Rapid Blend If, so sometimes when the blending process didn't work with Rapid Blend If, Apply Image can be a great substitute. Now, unlike Rapid Blend If, Apply Image actually creates a mask. So if I press on the brighter exposure and just choose Bright 1 for a second, we'll see that a mask has been created next to the brighter exposure. And essentially, what Apply Image is doing is looking at the image in front of us, so this preview and it's building a mask around this preview. So as with luminosity masks, essentially we want to build a mask not around the brighter exposure or the darker exposure because there isn't much information in either of these exposures. Instead, we want to build a mask around our base exposure. So we want the base exposure to take up the preview in the screen. Then we'll just click on our darker exposure while it's invisible and we'll go to apply image dark one and we'll see a darks mask has been created. Now, if I just delete this for a second and make the darker exposure visible, and I press dark one again, you'll see that the dark mask now is much darker than the first mask we created that was based on the base layer. So to blend the darker exposure, all we need to do is choose the darker exposure, make sure it's invisible, and just press dark one and we'll see a mask has been created which is selecting the highlights. So now if we make this visible, we'll see that we've restored those overexposed areas. Now to blend the brighter exposure, we again make sure it's invisible, but we select this layer and we just choose bright one. And we'll make both layers visible and again we'll reduce the opacity of this layer all the way to around 50. And that's the before and after. And on this particular image, Apply Image worked better than Rapid Blend If. Now we have three options for Apply Image. And let me show you exactly what they do. Apply Image Dark 1 creates a kind of a general mask. So if we press Dark 1 again and we look at the mask, we'll see there are lots of greys in the image and our highlights are nicely selected. But if I delete the mask and press Darks 2, we'll see that our image is much darker and now it has a much more targeted selection towards the highlights. So if we take a look at our image, we'll see that, again, it's done a very nice job of blending the exposures and it hasn't affected the surrounding areas. And finally, if we create a dark three mask, we'll make this invisible again. 
we'll see that this mask is extremely strong in its selection, including only the highlights in the mask. So the more restrictive selection you want, or the stronger the selection that you're looking for, the higher the number you choose in Apply Image. So a softer, less restrictive mask is Dark 1, and a more restrictive mask is Dark 2. And the same thing happens with the bright numbers. For example, Brights 1 is a general mask, like the one you see here, and Brights 2 and Brights 3 will offer more restrictive masks. Again, it's important to play with these buttons just to get a good idea of how they work. Now, the final instant digital blending process that we look at is creating gradient masks. And essentially, when we have a flat horizon like this, all we need to do is create a gentle mask, nothing complex, that will smoothly blend a couple of exposures. For example, we have a darker exposure here and an overexposed exposure here. And if I just press Create GM, we'll see that this smooth black and white mask has been created on our darker exposure. And it has instantly blended our two exposures. So we now have the nice foreground from the brighter exposure and the darker sky from the darker exposure. Now the mask that's created is a general mask. So it's made for images where the blending point is around about the middle part of the image. But if I just delete this exposure, what happens if our horizon is much higher in our image? So we need to refine the mask. So if we create the mask again, we can actually go in and refine the mask. We just click on Refine Mask, and to see the mask in action, we make sure we have On Layers selected here in the View Mode. Shift Edge, we're quite literally shifting our mask, moving it up or down. So moving it to the left, you'll see it goes much higher, and if we press OK, we'll see our gradient mask now has been pushed up. However, if we go back to Refine Mask, we can go the opposite way and move our edge down. Now, if you want to create a smoother gradient between the two exposures, all you need to do is increase the feather to whatever suits your needs and press OK. And at any point, if you find that the gradient mask is reversed, all you need to do is hold down Control and I or Command and I, and the mask itself will become inverted. This is a very powerful, a very quick blending process, especially if you have reasonably flat horizons. I highly recommend it. Now in this part of the panel, we just have some general luminosity mask functions. So if you want to create luminosity masks quickly and we like to use the channels palette, we can just press create all and it will create all of our luminosity masks. Or we can press delete all. And if we want to create brights, we can create just brights and the same with darks and midtones.